Welcome back to The Knife uh, Australia. In this video, I'm gonna be teaching a five-day master class to six students in person. I've never ever done anything like this before. I've only had a couple guys over on a Saturday or something to teach a class one-on-one -on -one for like one day and then uh, taught my dad how to make knife making over a long period of time in the shop. We're a couple hours from Sydney, Australia at Thawa Valley Forge and it's a Kapa Come Along homestead. It's a really, really cool place. It's also full service. You get accommodations and you get fed very, very well, I might add. And then there's an amazing shop equipped with tons of tools. So we're gonna jump right into making Damascus. So to start out with, I do my classic billet setup. I make up a billet with 1084 and 15 and 20 and then alter the layers to have some thick layers and some thin layers just to kind of mix it up and make the billet look really unique. And then wrap the billet with sheet metal. So there's zero atmosphere uh, forge welding. I'm gonna turn the heat down on the welder. Uh, I'll start by welding the corner here and here of the sheet metal. And then after that's done, we'll wrap the sheet metal around the ends a little bit and, and seal it off on the ends too. Right off the bat, I found it quite a challenge using equipment that I'm not used to. Cause I've been using my same equipment for many years in the shop and I've hardly ever used anybody else's equipment. So even like using a different welder was uh, quite different for me right off the bat. We got the billet all sealed up though, stuck a little nub on for the handle and stuck it in the giant forge. We're ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in the forge and uh, we'll go ahead and let it heat up. That's about how I get it looking right there, something like that. Uh, seal up the ends. What we're gonna do is forge weld it. We'll probably squish it down about a half inch and, uh, and then we'll, we'll grind the corners off and get the sheet metal removed right after just setting the weld. Their forge was absolutely massive. Uh, we were able to put about four to six big billets in there at a time. It would take a while to heat them all up at once. So at some point we started a second forge too, just because there was so much steel in there, it would take a while to heat it up, but it would fit a whole bunch of billets if you were patient enough to let them heat up. Right off the bat, I go ahead and use the 25 ton Eng Yang press they had in the shop to set the welds in my billet. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and take it outside and grind the sheet metal off the uh, sides. Uh, pretty much all I had to do to get the sheet metal off is just grind around the grind around the corners. Uh, I was just mentioning before that I, I you can see there's a bevel on the corners. That's just to get all the weld and stuff off there. At this point, we want to uh, we want to start really forming the W's. So I'm going to put it back in the uh, forge, heat it up, and then we're going to put it in the squaring dies and uh, we're gonna force some W's into it. It's just got all the layers running through it like this. What we, what we need to do is change those lines from being straight to being uh, kind of curved like this. And then the center a lot of times will just kind of be shaped like that. What we're gonna do is put it in squaring dies. So we'll put our billet in there and uh, smash it down pretty far and that'll curve those layers. It's gonna be hitting the corners first. So it'll, it'll turn our billet into something that looks uh, kind of like that. And the layers are gonna be all, all curved inside of it into these kind of W shapes. After the squaring die, we're just gonna take it to, uh, to the hammer or the press and uh, slowly draw it out into a long piece that we can then cut up. I'm gonna have all the students make some pretty large billets because I find when making mosaic, it, it kind of helps keep everything nice and even if you make a pretty good sized billet. Whenever I use really small billets to make a mosaic, it's harder to keep everything nice and clean and, and get the kind of distortion, the good distortion we want and not get like really bad distortion. So we put the layers in there horizontally and then uh, squish them down into the squaring dock. You can see how it kind of compresses all of our layers into that, into that small area now. So now our layers are gonna be curved really, really nicely. So the next stage we're gonna to wanna to do is start flattening this bar out. So I'm gonna forge the bar this way. And as we forge that bar out, it'll take those, those seeds that are starting to form and crush them even more and make them more aggressive. I'll tell you, this is still on the first half day of the class and I was absolutely terrified. I'd never done anything like this before. Uh, the, 
the teaching that I had done has just been on YouTube and over the internet and everything. So an in-person class with six students, I just thought everything was going so slow and we were never going to get done or anything. And I was super, super nervous. But after lunch that first day, I started feeling a lot better about everything. Um, something about that good meal we had for lunch and some coffee and water in my system just turned my, turned my mood all the way around and started really enjoying the class for the rest of the time. The shop was equipped with a massive air hammer. Uh, I think it was something close to like 200 pound and it was really fun to use. I have almost no experience with using air hammers. Uh, I probably spent a total of like 10 or 15 minutes running one in the past, but really not any experience at all, especially with one this big. I think you could draw out a billet really quickly with it, but since I'm used to the press and I'm not really familiar with a hammer, I ended up spending most of my time using the press because I'm familiar with how it draws the steel out and I can get it to draw the steel pretty quickly. Everybody's starting to work on their billets now. Lots of welding going on. We've got billets of steel being forge welded together and cans being ripped off and, and MIG weld to stick the billets and everybody's just jumping right in. So it's, it's starting to get chaotic with six billets all happening at the same time. We're re-squaring, making W's. Uh, people are welding on their billets. Some are cleaning steel. Uh, all sorts of crazy stuff happening in the shop and I'm trying to like oversee everything and make sure everybody's doing okay and, and staying on procedure and doing everything in the, in the order that I wanted it to happen in the class. Make sure it's nice and clean. I try to get them lined up, get the pattern lined up and also uh, get them lined up this way too. with a belt sander and dip it in the acid to see the pattern. And if there's weld or a bad spot or something, you can cut more off. And we're gonna re-square to one and a quarter. We're gonna draw it out to one and a quarter. We're gonna squaring dies to one and a quarter. One and a quarter. So one of the first concepts I really wanted the students to get was the way I mirror the pattern all the way through my billet as I cut and fold the layers. So we went ahead and marked out each piece with a number so we could keep it in the right order and mirror the pieces all the way through the billet just so the pattern would look really consistent all the way through. I am working on my mosaic billet for the class. This is my billet that I'm using to demonstrate stuff. Just cleaning off some of this excess metal sticking off, sticking up right here. Oh, that's looking really cool. Yeah, you got some crazy W's in there. Been taking this around, showing everybody, getting ready to forge weld it. When you weld up the seam, you want to come back and grind off the majority of the weld, just barely leave it sticking up. The reason we're doing it this time, but we didn't the last time, is because to forge weld this, we're going to use the squaring die. If you leave that weld sticking up really high, it just shoves it deep into the billet, and then you got to grind it all out. So now I've set up my billet in a four-way configuration and I've stuck some 1084 in between the, uh, the four-way so it'll add some really nice dark lines and kind of separate the explosion. So I MIG weld over all the seams and then grind a little bit of the MIG weld off just so it doesn't get shoved deep into the billet when we go to put it in the squaring die. I'm gonna forge weld my four-way billet so you can see what that looks like. be able to like really press it much. Take a little bite. From here I'll probably uh, draw it out on the press. The combination of, the, of uh, that press and then this press with squaring dies. The power hammers were a lot of fun to use. Uh, they had a big one and a little one and I loved them both. But again, I'm not really experienced with those. So for me, it was actually quicker to use the hydraulic press because I just understand it better and I'm way more used to it because that's all I have back at home.
Ooh, that's looking nice. Yeah, you can leave it like that if you want to. It'll give a little different effect, but in the end, the effect will still be similar because we'll pour weight again. You'll get uh, you'll get that time of force. You'll have more. Uh, you'll have a couple large explosion things. Here's what the re-squaring looks like. You basically, just take your billet, put it on a 45 degree angle, and then I have uh, I have the student smash it all the way down to like an inch and a quarter. Put it back in the forge and turn it 90 degrees, and forge it all the way down to inch and a quarter again. And then you just make a square bar after that. And that'll get those layers, instead of going straight through the billet, they'll be going across the uh, billet on a 45 degree angle. Uh, everybody's moving right through it. Right now we're on the uh, the second four weighing so far. Or the, the first, somewhere between the first and second four weighing operation. So we're starting to get some cool looking Damascus patterns developing. We're starting to see some mosaic billets emerging from all the grinding dust and welding and heat in the shop. I'll just do one of those. That's that's way larger than one eighth, but what do you want? you're going to end up stretching it and have a little more distortion. You want it to be super square with the bar at this point because uh, if, if it's tipped a little bit one way or the other. Uh, your, your tiles are going to be a really weird shape and then when you go to put them together, the pattern won't match up very well at all. So the, the straighter you can get these pieces cut, the better everything's going to look in your final product. This is critical. The next thing we're going to start working on is tile welding. We've got our four-way billet that's been four-way twice so that there's four explosions and then a bonus fifth explosion in the center. So if you have a TIG welder, it's really nice to uh, TIG weld on here. You can just turn the heat down low and really, really, uh, really just tack it on with some really strong tacks that don't penetrate very deep. So the MIG is a little bit of a challenge, but you can get it done. So I'm gonna probably tack it. Uh, we'll put one tack like right here. Probably one here. We'll lay out all those tiles and forge weld them together and then we'll be able to transfer the pattern from being on the end of the billet to across the, the main surfaces of the knife that we're gonna see in the end. Because right now the pattern's only on the very end, but we need to transfer that pattern and make it so you can see it all across the, the main surface of the billet. It's really important to get the billet nice and square onto the bar that you're welding it to. And it's important that your bandsaw cuts really straight too. Because if you have a little bit of an angle on your pieces, uh, it'll really mess up the way they all fit up together and it'll kind of throw off your pattern from matching. We've got two different band saws going in the shop. There's a small one with a, uh, a jerry-rigged bottle of water to cool it and it actually worked really well. It was a little slow but it cut the tiles up beautifully and I just loved the way they uh, they hooked up that redneck style watering system. really important to number all your pieces here because we want to make sure the pattern gets mirrored all throughout the billet. If you don't number your pieces and keep track of it, there, there can be some minor differences throughout your billet. So if you put, uh, like let's say piece one with piece 15, the pattern probably won't match up very well at all. You'll have like a weird transition where one pattern kind of goes to the next when you forge weld it all together. I also had everybody weld their tiles to a piece of mild steel, and that just acts as a heat sink to kind of hold a little extra heat, and it helps hold the tiles more securely. And then again, we seal it all up with uh, MIG weld so we can have zero atmosphere forge welding. After we get the forge weld set, I have all the students grind off the mild steel plate on the back side, and also grind off all the MIG welds around the edges and the front side. Everybody's billets are looking really well, but at this point I'm actually kind of scared inside because we're doing all this critical tile welding and it's 
really hard to get them to stick properly sometimes, so I'm hoping and praying that everybody's billets come out really well without any horrible tears in the edges of it or anything. And I'm really, really hoping the patterns all get lined up really nicely. But I don't know at this stage. I know there's a beautiful potential in their steel, but will it come out in the final product? In next week's video, we're gonna finish up this five-day masterclass and see what the students accomplish through it. May the forge be with you. Bye-bye.